Hey, everybody. Welcome to a little after hours bonus segment here on the Great Beat Extravaganza Fall Fest weekend. I'm Kate Richberg, and it is great to have you all here. I don't know about you folks, but uh, wow, what a day, or at least what a day tomorrow is going to be, because I'm actually, once again, pre-recording this for you. So I know that a lot of you are commenting live and have, you know, kind of tucked in after a long day of watching the Great Beat Extravaganza. I'm so sorry I can't respond to comments live on the air, but we like to add in a little kind of special uh, segment uh, to these weekends. So uh, my special segment this weekend, I'm in charge of it. So this is my segment. I'm going to walk you uh, a little bit through uh, some of my organization tips and tricks for my studio. That's where I am standing right now in my home studio for beadshop.com. Um, and over the years since I've been in this business, since 1992, I've learned a few things about organization. So I'm going to share some of my ideas with you. If you have any questions or um, uh tips that you want to share or whatever, just toss them down into the comments and I'll rewatch this at a later date as well. So I can check out some of your questions. Well, uh, let me, I've got my handy cam right here, so I'm going to start going rogue. So let me add, I'm going to add this camera to the stage. Let me see if I can, uh, add the zoom. Here we go. Okay. So I, um, I'm going to give you a quick little tour. We're going to talk about, whoops, I don't want to go that far. I'm going to talk about um, uh, how I do some organizational things and stuff like that. So let's get this party started here. Let me get here. Okay, so you can see, maybe I should go, should I go this way? I think that's what I want to do. So what I've got here in my space, let me back up uh, a little bit. Uh, what I did for my space, and I was really super lucky to be able to do it, when we moved our big offices at beadshop.com, I uh, made a studio in my home and I converted my garage. So that's where we're standing now. But I had to make kind of this small space because this is where I do all of my filming. You can see it's a little messy there <laughs> on this side from the stuff that I've been filming earlier today. But I have kind of put everything together so it's usually at my fingertips so I can find it. I also have uh, put things into, let me um, turn this camera on here, let me see, no, I don't know if I can, well it doesn't matter. Um, I've also, because I'm going to turn around here, I've also kind of put things into zones in my space. So. I also have my metal smithing zone, you can see I've been working actually on my torch. so my space isn't quite as pristine as it could be. Um, but so I have my metal smithing zone over there, right? I've got my making bead shop beading zone over here. I've got some product and stuff over there. And then let's give you a real dose of realness there. Look at that mess on the floor. There's my desk. What a mess. Let's not look at it anymore. All right, but we're here really to talk about beads. So let me start with this beauty that's right here. This is um, a type setting cabinet. And as you can see right here, I've labeled all of this stuff. And let me, I'm going to actually, um, I'm going to actually add myself back here a, a second. You know, one of the things that um, I have to grapple with is I have personal beads that I love and use in my own work. And then I have beads for my business, right? So I have to kind of make a, a line, right? Personal beads, beads that I collect, beads for my own personal jewelry versus product that I have for the shop and the business. So this storage right here behind me is where I store a lot of my personal beads. So let me show you that again. Let me get the camera into position and let me put this camera up right here. Okay. So this is it. This is a typesetting cabinet you can see, and it's all, uh, it has, uh, thanks to my mom, 
all of these nice little tags on it. And these are just all of my personal beads that I have been collecting since probably 1990 or so. This is the red orange drawer. Here's the pink and purple drawer, right? Um, I have some miscellaneous drawers down here of just random crap that sometimes I look through and sometimes I don't, but I've named it mixed colors, so at least I don't feel bad about it. But this is where I keep all my personal stuff, okay? Another thing that I do with my personal beads is, um, it, and it's kind of fun. I just want to give this thing its due. I've, I've had this forever. I bought it many, many years ago. And so I keep adding stuff to it. I know that not a lot of us have like access to this kind of cabinet or whatever, but if you have beads, let's say that you're collecting, right. And that you love, and you're like, you know what, these are my writer dies. I don't want to use these in projects. Then don't put them in I kind of look at this as my bead museum, right? So put them in a little collection, right? And look at them, play around with them, that kind of stuff, but don't feel bad about it, right? That's so that's my that's my bead museum. Now, for personal beads that I use for my jewelry, let me put this one back up here. Um I have um some shelves and I have personal beads that I use when I'm designing. Now, a lot of times I use these nice trays here, and it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can focus this. Hang on just a second. It's a little harder with a steady cam. So let me see if I can zoom in, zoom out. That's a little bit better, I think. Um, there we go. So you can get like wood trays or. Um, I don't know, whatever, design trays. I'm going to bring this actually over here. So maybe, maybe I can show you these a little bit better. I feel like Spielberg on a steady cam, right? <laughs> Filming. So I put a lot of these trays by color. And you can see these have blues, but it also has some reds, some other kind of interesting things coming around here with these. And what I do, see if I can zoom in there. I will put them out like I used to when I had a brick and mortar store and I price them. So this is the price that I will charge myself for this bead when I use it in a piece. That way it really works with the way that I like to design, right? So I can come in, I can pull things out. I can palette with them, that kind of thing. And then, um, and then I'm ready to go. Let me see. Sorry, this, um, keeping this in focus is obviously going to be a bit of a challenge, but there we go. Okay. So I urge you, if you have, I'm going to add myself back to this. If you have like trays or, or things that, uh, you know, you have laying around, putting your beads in there, I'll show it to you this way and giving them a price. It's a great way to shop when you are making a project. You could also do this with baggies, um, tackle boxes, all of those kinds of things, right? You could do it that way too. Um, but putting the price on right away, and I, I put them in the individual bead price and then I'll just charge myself for it when I use it, right? So let me put this down. Let's take a look at what else is behind here. I'm gonna go back to Steadicam here. I'm gonna try and keep everything in focus. Let me get this camera back out. I'm gonna sit down, I've got a low little stool here. Let me see if I can focus that. There we go. Okay, so this is a piece that I got at Ikea years and years ago. It's one of those big kind of tables. Let me see if I can zoom just a little bit. This is really when I need a camera person. <laughs> I need a whole production assistant team, right? 
But this is one of those long pieces here, and I've got several of these. One of these I use for like packaging and assembly, and then I have one that's a smaller one. You can see across right over there where my um, where my uh, uh, torch and stuff is over there. Okay, but here this is where I kind of like the the public view of what you see on my my um, background. But all of this really does serve a purpose. Down here, and again, I have not cleaned anything up, so you're seeing this Kate realness right here. I've got these cool little bins that fit in here pretty nicely. And just about everything, though if they're turned around, probably the tag's on the other side, which doesn't do me much good. But I've tagged everything. So I know when I need my wax linen, when I need my Kumahimo supplies, when I need some ADOTs down there, the hemp. A lot of my go-to stuff for bead shop projects kind of lives in these things. Now I'm going to swing around. I've got another one of these right here where I do my actual broadcast from. That's my broadcast surface. But here you can see I have, let me see if I can work the zoom on this. Sorry, I, I wish I had a little bit of a better, that's not too bad, a little bit of a better focus on this thing. I'm sorry, it's not the best. Um, but you can see here I have all of the things that I need to create jewelry in bins. And bins really work for me. So I just label them, six aught seed beads. There's my Charlotte's, Miyuki pearls with some soft flex and crimps thrown in there. But there's like 11 aughts and drops, um, bindings, head pins and eye pins, etc. So it's all kind of at my fingertips here. Now, it's not the most beautifully organized for sure, but it's also not terrible. I want to show you this. Sorry, I hope I'm not getting you seasick. These drawers right here, I want to show you. These are kind of my leftovers. You know, we always have like one or two or three or a few little things that are always just kind of hanging around, right? Well, these drawers, I just throw things in by color. And I don't sweat it, right? Here's purple and pink right there. Here is blue and green. The blue and green drawer is super full, right? Maybe there's some random strands in there or things I'm not really sure what to do with, but at least I want to sort them by color, right? Color is really the way, let me stand up here. Color is really the way that I work mostly, right? Um, so that if those little ones and twos or extras or whatever just get thrown in that bin, then I don't have to worry, right? So I can just organize them by color. And then if I need a handful of some kind of color, whatever, um, I can go in that drawer and use it. One other thing I want to show you, and let me kind of show you right back here. It's a little bit easier for me to deal with without my Steadicam camera. I have this tray that's sitting right here in my space. And this tray, kind of hard for you to see, but I'll kind of tilt it up. It just has like a bunch of random crap on it. And that's um, intentional, right? We all have little random things as we're working. And for me, to be honest, if I have something in the way and I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do with it. And I need to look around and find a place for it or whatever. What I do instead is I just toss it like here's some, a seed bead tube that was bugging me for whatever reason. I'll just toss it on the tray. And then maybe once a week, and I actually do do this about once a week, I clear the tray. It's something that we hold and then I put everything, you know, put everything away. Something I've held over from the days of our brick and mortar store, you know, when people would bring stuff up to the counter or it was a go back or it was a return or whatever it was, we wouldn't take the time in that moment to go put it back. We had a centralized tray like this. We'd toss it on the tray then before the end of the day, we'd make sure that all of that stuff is restocked. So I have that same thing here in my studio. It's kind of like a restock tray, 
right? So if I'm trying to clean something up really quickly before I do a broadcast, or if I'm creating a sample and I'm like, oh crap, I don't need this piece of wire here, this wire spool, but it's kind of in my way. It's kind of bugging me. I'll just toss it onto the go back tray. Then it will take me 10 minutes to put the go back tray back later. Okay. I also have here on my back wall, um, things that I want to grab onto quickly, right? So I've got my tools that I need for my broadcasts. I've got my glues, things like that. Pegboard, I love pegboard. I have pegboard over there with all my tools on them. Um, I've got pegboard over there with all my dies and stuff for my hydraulic press. And I love being able to hang things up so you can see them kind of quickly. So I've got tools, I've got a bin for glue. So all of my glue lives there. Usually I have a place for my tape measure that I can never find, but usually it sits about right there, right? Um, some of my soft flex, some of my pens, and it doesn't have to be the most beautiful visual thing in the world, but I think giving yourself a wall like this is helpful. And with pegboard hooks, it's really easy to reconfigure. Um, I have some of the latest stuff I'm working with. That's our ultra suede, our new ultra suede that we're going to add in. But it's right there, front and center, so I can work with it, right? Got a little bit of inspiration there. I've got a few earrings that I can quickly slip into my ears before I do a broadcast. But I think, <coughs> pardon me, I think what I'm trying to get at here is accessibility. You know, there's no right way or wrong way to organize yourself, right? There are people who are much, much more organized than I am. And there are people who are much, much less organized than I am. You know, it's not a contest, right? Just find out what works for you and try and implement it. I would also recommend baby steps, right? I've been doing this for, I don't know, 30 years, over 30 years. And every part of me um, sometimes rebels against organization. But if I have a bin for it and a bin that's labeled, I find that that helps me really stick with things. If something has a place, then I know I can put that thing back in that place every single time. And I don't have to worry. Like, especially this wire, I have a bin with all my wire. Is it sorted by color? No. Is it sorted by gauge? No. Is it all thrown in there together? Yes. But it's all in there together. That's the operative word. Okay. Also, I would recommend, you know, I think that a lot of us start, we're like, I, I need to kind of get ready to get ready to start the project. And where am I going to begin? All of this stuff. You know what? Just start. It was like recording these things for this weekend for TGBE. I'm like, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. You know what? Just start. So I started with one, right? With a recording. Same thing with you. I've got all these things all over my studio. What am I going to do? You know what? Organize one thing. Look at, focus on one surface, one bead color, one batch of beads, you know, one bead tray. And then as you move along, things over the course of 365 days over the year will slowly start to get organized. You know, I have a tendency to have things super organized. Everything looks great. And then there's one event that happens like, I don't know, maybe I have a big project or whatever. And then the whole thing looks like a cyclone went through. Right. But if you have spaces to kind of reorganize that cyclone back, onto itself. Um, it helps, right? I want to show you uh, a little bit more. I've got something here for you. Let me, uh, I'm going to go steady cam again. So let me, let me do this and let me walk over here. I want to show you here are, here's my pegboard with all of my tools. And I painted that pegboard. That pegboard came from like the Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And I painted it. I screwed some um, little one by ones, I think, into the wall. And then I screwed that into there. Um, I really, 
I cannot tell you how much I love Big Board. Um, I think it really just, you can see everything you need. I like seeing my tools. You can see under there, there's some wire, not glamorous, but there's a space for it and it's organized, right? Let me show you this little thing. Don't, don't mind the, don't mind the bubble wrap, right? Again, dose of realness. There's the bubble wrap. I want to show you this thing that is really, uh, it's kind of a portable little office here. Let me move my coffee cup out of the way. This was, I just sent out some jewelry, so I needed some jewelry tags. But when I travel and sell my jewelry, one of the things I was always wrestling with was, um, you know, how to cart around my cards or my packing materials or whatever. This was kind of a game changer for me. This took me years to figure out. But this is just kind of a larger tackle box right here. And can you see, you can't really, but because the focus isn't great. So let me try and focus this. Hang on. I've got to go to my steady, my other camera. Focus this in. Somebody want to come out and be my camera person? That would be amazing. There we go. That looks better. So what I have in here are my cards, my business cards, or my thank you cards that say thank you, right? Here, a little thing for that. Those live in here. Other little care cards or, you know, little other little thank you things here like this. I've got my rubber stamps in here. Other jewelry tags like necklace tags, earring tags, little tiny bags, stickers. Usually I have some of my bags in here. I have to restock and replenish those. But I've got everything I need, some pro polish pads. So this is like my little portable office. So when I go and do a show, I just close it up and all of my materials and everything are all ready to go. I really wanted to share that with you. Also, this is, now I'm just showing off, but this is one of those big tool chests from, um, uh, it's from uh, Harbor Freight, right? So if you have the room at home, this is a really, really fantastic work surface. It has kind of like a, a um, a wood surface on it. And then it's got some drawers. It's really heavy duty. You can see I've got a lot of my metal working tools actually in here, but, and those suckers are heavy. So there's a lot to, uh, it can really hold, hold a lot of stuff. So this one, it's a, it's a Yukon is what it is. Um, let me see if I can pull back just a little bit so you can see that. And that comes from, um, Harbor Freight. Again, I'm sorry, this, my phone is not liking the, let me zoom that in. There we go. Let me go back to uh, my, my front camera and we'll get a little bit, uh, it'll be a little less blurry there. Um, here, this is another table that I love, love, love. This is, it's called a Husky table. It's an adjustable table. Um, and I believe it is from, um, Home Depot or one of the big box stores, but it, it has a, it cranks up and down. You can see on that side, it's kind of hard to see, but you can lift your table to working height. So that's where I do a lot of my metal smithing, but it would also be great as a bead table as well, because you can lift it or lower it like that. Again, here's my little beading area that I've carved out. But, you know, you don't need a ton of space. Um, you just need a little bit of organization. Let me show you here one last thing. More pegboard. Let me turn this. You can kind of see going up like that. Um, I've got pegboard there with stuff that's hung on it. More samples over there. So there's a lot of stuff that you can, you can do with it. I'm going to go ahead and put me back up here. There I am. So yeah, the steady cam I know is not the best. I'm sorry that the, I really need two people to do this filming, but 
I hope you picked up some tips and tricks. Um, I hope that you've added some good tips and tricks in the comments. Um, and if you have any questions, just shoot me an email right over at info at beadshop.com. We'll talk more amongst yourselves, put more tips in the comments. I'm going to come back and take a look at those after uh, when I return. So thanks again, folks. It really was a great first day for the great bead extravaganza. I wanted to mention again, how thankful that all of our small business businesses are for you folks out there watching, because without you folks out there, we hear and our small businesses would not be able to survive and even sometimes thrive, which is amazing. Now, don't forget tomorrow I'm going to put up, let me do this real quick. We've got Saturday or Sunday shows coming up. We start tomorrow off with Abby Berta of The Bead Place and Abby starts at 8 30 a.m. Pacific, 1130 a.m. Eastern. And I'll be back tomorrow live with our special Fall Fest guest, Gail Crosman Moore of Gail Crosman Moore Designs. Um, and she'll be going on at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. All right, friends. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Get some rest. And we'll see you tomorrow for day two of the Great Beat Extravaganza. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.